The Society for Conceptual Logistics and Communication Research presents Framing, as adapted from the work of Robert Edmund. In 1993, Robert Entman published an article in the Journal of Communication titled Framing Toward Clarification of a Fractured Paradigm. Let's start by looking at the text of the article to see how Entman conceptualizes the concept of framing. To frame is to select some aspects of a perceived reality and make them more salient in a communicating text in such a way as to promote a particular problem definition causal interpretation, moral evaluation, and or treatment recommendation for the item described. Edmund's laying out an idea that people perceive realities and in doing so select certain aspects of those realities to focus on. Let's take a look at an example. In the 1920s, the United States was in the midst of a Red Scare. Two men, Sacco and Vanzetti, were tried and subsequently put to death for murder. During the trial, and even after they were put to death, many people protested what they believed to be politically unjust proceedings. This is a photograph taken from 1927 showing a group of people protesting the trial. There are many ways that you could perceive this reality. For example, you could focus on the text of the signs that the individuals were holding and the political message that they intended to send. Alternatively, you could focus on the fact that there are children among the grown men at the protest. A third element that you could focus on in perceiving this reality is the attire that the men were wearing. Depending on what you were interested in, you might focus on each of these different elements in perceiving the reality of the protest. For this example, let's focus on the children. Edmund believes, as articulated in his conception of framing, that one who is at this location and viewing these children could see them and promote a particular problem definition or a causal interpretation or a moral evaluation or a treatment recommendation. And further, they could argue all four in a sequence. Let's take a look at how this might happen. Edmund says frames can be used to define problems. This means to determine what a causal agent is doing with what costs and benefits. For example, somebody perceiving this reality might argue that the men are the causal agents and that they are bringing children with them to a political rally. And somebody could determine what the costs and benefits of this approach are. You could also diagnose causes. You could identify the forces creating the problem, such as why do people feel that they should bring children to political rallies? Third, you could make moral judgments. This means you evaluate the causal agents and their effects. For example, is it good or is it bad that adults might either bring or simply allow children to attend such a politically motivated rally? And finally, you could suggest remedies in which you offer and justify treatments for the problems and predict their likely effects. So you could argue that allowing children to continue coming to political rallies would be bad for reasons X, Y, and Z, and you could offer the prohibition on children attending as a way of prohibiting those bad things from happening. In 2003, Etman published another article called Cascading Activation contesting the White House's frame after 9-11. This was in the journal Political Communication. In this, he has a different conception of what framing means. And that means that in this 10 years, his idea of how to conceptualize the notion of framing has changed slightly. Let's take a look at how he accounts for this in the text. Framing entails selecting and highlighting some facets of events or issues and making connections among them so as to promote a particular interpretation, evaluation, and or solution. 
they use words and images highly salient in the culture, which is to say noticeable, understandable, memorable, and emotionally charged. Ten years later, Entman has a different way of conceptualizing the concept of framing. Let's take a look at the differences between his 1993 and his 2003 approach to framing. First of all, the 2003 conception emphasizes the process over the agents. This means that in the 2003 version, Edmund is more interested on how people go about framing than he is on the people who necessarily do the framing. Secondly, the 2003 conception reduces his emphasis on subjective elements. Instead, Entman seems more concerned with concrete, more objective, or quantifiable elements within a perceived reality. Third, Entman moves away from problems and towards issues. He removes the phrase, define a problem, and instead replaces it with select an issue. Problems are generally more specific and concrete, whereas issues are broader. And finally, he changes the phrase moral evaluation to simply the word evaluation. This implies he's no longer only interested in how people perceive something to be good or bad, but also perhaps whether they are useful and what ends they produce. This means it's no longer just whether it's right or wrong, but also whether it might be useful or possible. These differences are found in two different publications by Robert Entman, the first in 1993 in the second in 2003. And these changes represent an important part of the idea of conceptualizing a concept. Terms and their definitions are particularly static. They don't really change over time. But by looking at how people approach problems, by looking at how they conceptualize them, it's much easier to approach change over time because conceptions can change, whereas definitions are difficult to change. This video has been a project of the Society for Conceptual Logistics and Communication Research. It's part of a series called Visualizing Conceptualizing. This video and more can be found on our website at www.sclcr.com.